Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you probably know, I have been on a mission the last few months to find more Middle Eastern perfumes that are not copies. I feel like people kind of have this preconceived notion and I was also one of these people for sure that Middle Eastern Arabic fragrances are all clones and I could not have been more wrong. I have been able to discover a handful of really spectacular brands that have quality offerings for a low price point that you expect with Arabic perfumes. And most importantly, they smell great and original. So today I am partnering with a brand that I have been talking a lot about the last couple months that I've been really enjoying, Nusuk and Riffs. We're gonna talk about some of the offerings that they have from their catalog that I have in my collection and as always all of the opinions that I have are my own. I have been talking about these for a few months now so I've really been enjoying them, spending time getting to know them. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with a couple from Riffs and the first one that I want to talk about is Imperial Noir and I know I have put this in like multiple top 10 videos. I have been really liking this and I've also been seeing a lot of comments from you guys asking where to buy this. They are still working on their US website at the moment. If it is available now I will leave it linked in the description but um, it's as soon as it is available and live, I will put the link down there. But the other website that I found this on is fragrancex.com. And so this is a very aromatic, spicy, smooth vanilla, like a really masculine vanilla scent. Ah, every time that I smell this, I fall in love all over again. I have been, I mean, I've been talking about this one nonstop. I really, really like this fragrance. It's sweet. Like you definitely get a big dose of sweetness, but it's not synthetic. It's not like super sugary sweet or anything like that. There is a dose of tonka beans here, but what I get most out of this is black pepper. There's a little bit of a creamy cardamom and vanilla. It's not like the most complex, you know, dimensional fragrance. It is pretty simple, but I like how simple it is. And I like how all of these notes are done. And I want to emphasize a very masculine way. I would not say that this is like a unisex fragrance at all. It definitely leans masculine. It is beast mode, of course, as you can really expect from like any Middle Eastern fragrance on the planet. They're really known for being cheap, very affordable, and just totally strong. This is also a very long lasting scent. It is a lady killer for sure. It's been one of my favorite Middle Eastern discoveries. It's a very masculine vanilla. Imperial Noir from Riffs. So the next scent is Inspiro Men. And this is supposed to be more of a like floral, kind of fresh fragrance, still masculine, but done in a romantic way. Like the whole inspiration behind this is like a really nice romantic date night scent. And this is definitely something that has a lot of lavender. Now in the opening, the way that the lavender is done it kind of can come off a bit menthol-y, like kind of like this super dose of mintiness. The opening is not the best, I will say, but give it a couple minutes and then as it goes into the mid, it gets a lot better. It kind of settles down on that lavender. And it's kind of interesting because what you get with Inspiro Men is this really nice like cooling sensation. I think that that's what I'm thinking of when I like say menthol-y, like it's very cooling, but still warm at the same time. This has iris and tonka bean, vanilla and amber, cardamom and cedar, and it kind of settles into the mid to this more like iris and vanilla with cedar, it's still a bit woody and on the fresher side as well. The cardamom makes it very smooth and the lavender is done in a very minty way. I'm sure that this has geranium as well. Like there's some, like that cooling sensation is coming from somewhere, that mintiness. And I think it's a combination of geranium and lavender. It would be an amazing like summer date night scent because there is still something in the background of this, it feels kind of oriental. So it's a really interesting contrast in the scent and definitely very unique. Like I don't even know what I would come close to comparing this to, but it's just a really great date night scent. I don't, I don't know. I think that because it is woody, it could work in the fall, but I don't know. I just picture the summertime for some reason. It's really good. Killer bottle. 
really elegant kind of romantic date night scent Inspiro Men. So next we're going to talk about the house of Nusuk and this is the house that really, really impressed me with their offerings. And it's not just me, like you guys have seen the women on my channel, I've been doing a lot of blind reactions with other people and you've seen their faces when they smell these fragrances. They are really something special. And I wanna start off with another one that I've been talking about almost constantly, which is All Mugged Leaf Signature. The signature is the, the more masculine take. It kind of has this gold plating. And once again, the bottle is so cool, but the scent is what is amazing. This is like a really bold and exotic rose oud scent with some kind of leathery facets and a lot of spice. When you smell this, magnetic cap too, want to put that out there, magnetic cap. When you smell this, you would never, never in a million years guess that this is a cheapy fragrance. Like, like around that $30 mark, you would never in a million years think that. It is so good. And you get the leatheriness from the get-go, but it's an elegant leather. It's a very dressy, exotic feeling scent. It's a little bit fruity in a way. It's not really like a fruit that jumps out at you, but it is darker and kind of balsamic, but not smoky. This has bergamot and neroli and rose with oud, amber, patchouli, and vanilla, musk, oud, and sandalwood. There is like some sort of slight fruity undertone that you get with this. I can't really quite pinpoint what it is, but it is incredible. I'm not sure. Out of all of them in this video, I think this one might be my favorite. It just has that wow factor that you want to get, like the bang for your buck. Like it's just, it is incredible. And of course, a beast, like easily 12 plus hours. Honestly, I feel like it could last way longer than that too, like weeks on your clothes with an insane scent trail. I've been talking about it a lot. I've been really enjoying it. And everyone that I've shown it to has really enjoyed it too. It is a standout, definitely. All Mook to Leaf signature from New Souk. But now I wanna talk about the fresher, fruitier, kind of feminine counterpart. This is just all Mook to Leaf. And I just wanna to say too, I really enjoyed the details on these bottles. So this is a really beautiful fruit bomb. And I did a first impression with this, um, with Kelsey. And you guys saw my reaction when I first smelled it. It was huge. So this has a beautiful note breakdown. We have pear and melon and pineapple with bergamot, rose, jasmine, lily, musk, amber, and patchouli. It is so pretty. In the first blast, like in that, opening right away, you kind of get this tart, juicy pineapple, but as it settles, more of the other fruits come out more. That melon is so realistic in this fragrance, but what's really cool about it too, is that it has, like as it develops and really blooms, I'm not sure where it's coming from, but there's something in this fragrance that smells a little boozy, like champagne, kind of sparkling, effervescent, kind of like sappy, syrupy in a way, but not in a bad way, not like in a cloying, too much type of way, but just like when you think of a really like fruity kind of champagne. It's just so bright and airy. The scent just floats around in the air and the fruitiness is, I can't get over it. It's really, really gorgeous. It is the perfect fruity floral with a twist, kind of like a summer night in a very sultry way. And it gets a bit warmer as it dries as well. And you'll find that the florals take over center stage, like over on top of the fruits. Really beautiful, just enveloping flowers, but still very fresh. It is also a beast. I've worn this a few times. <laughs> I will warn you now. Do not overspray this. I did that once on accident and it was so strong. That's just all Mook de Leaf. So not signature, the silver bottle. So we have two more. This one is Ajwa, probably not pronouncing that right, but we're just gonna do a quick overview. This is kind of a warmer, spicier, balsamic scent. It's honestly not my favorite bottle in the collection, this like red velvet. It's still nice. It kind of opens a little bit floral with this almost like clean vibe, like clean linen vibe to it, but it does change pretty quickly and becomes more of this like warmer, 
kind of benzoic scent. This has a touch of spice. There's a little bit of cinnamon combined with musk and a really like powdery woodiness. But I'd say that mostly what I get out of this is musk, like a lot of musk and benzoin and just a little bit of spice. The muskiness in here mixed with the flowers really creates a kind of clean linen, very fresh scent that's still very warm at the same time. It's a really great scent if you want a musk, like a clean musk fragrance with some warm undertones. But we're gonna go ahead and finish up the video with a scent that has been getting a little bit of hype online lately. And this one is Fawa. I'm sure you've seen this over on Instagram, over on TikTok. I know I've been seeing it all over the place. And I just wanna to say too, this is a really heavy duty bottle and the cap as well is heavy. Like there's some weight to this, which I like. So this opens with a lot of lavender, another lavender based scent with some thyme that just opens in a very captivating way, but it changes really quickly. You get this lemon zest with lavender and patchouli with a nice, very crisp, vibrant green apple and a little bit of a mossy green undertone too, like a mossy earthiness. I really like this one too. This is the type of fragrance that is so multifaceted like everywhere you look there's a different like category and something interesting with a really nice vetiver and vanilla in the base there's almost something in here that could be a touch smoky but it's camouflaged like it's hiding underneath this very creamy lemon and lavender almost semi gourmand it's interesting because the lemon doesn't really come off to me like a candy, super sweet lemon, but there's something gourmand about it. It's really interesting. Like there's a lot of creamy textures in Fawa. It's really, really intriguing. That's the best way to describe it. And it keeps changing as you smell it. Incredibly complex. It feels like the type of scent that would be an amazing signature every single day scent for the fall because there's still some weight and depth to this scent. It is fresh aromatic, very complex, but there's something that really holds it together that would make it work in the cooler weather. I love how it holds onto the creaminess into the dry down and it's still very aromatic and spicy too. Nothing about this, and I wanna emphasize with any of the fragrances that I've talked about so far, none of them smell synthetic in the very least. Like they smell like quality perfumes. They do not smell cheap, like, $20, $30 fragrances at all. You would never guess that smelling them. I am incredibly impressed and I just got to discover this, so I'm going to enjoy spending more time with it. If I had to pick an absolute favorite, like a winner from the entire video, it's going to have to be, can you guess? All Mook de Leaf signature. It, it just has to be. This just really, it really impressed me, has a major wow factor, very sexy and masculine, and is a lady killer, once again. It definitely attracts me, so. But honestly, you could never really go wrong with any of the fragrances that I talked about. They're very affordable, great quality, very long lasting. So if you are like me and are looking to add more Middle Eastern fragrances to your collection, Riffs and Nusuk are great houses to look into. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below. What is your favorite Middle Eastern fragrance house? I would love to know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.